Okay, so this is a tool I'm giving away. This is taking two, two cameras and giving us four outputs. This is a generic Xbox controller. It would be nice to know if this works with anything else. But I'm going to just do my best to demo it really fast. So basically you've got transforms for multiple cameras. I only have the tiling options yet. Um, the left trigger can zoom. I guess that's a little more helpful, right? You zoom that in. Now we're seeing the controller. Um, this left bumper is for fine tuning, so it's not zipping around, otherwise, you get fast speed. And that works on both of these. And then your right trigger is going to be for keying both cameras. Um, and there's two different kinds of keys here. There's a saturation based and a value or like brightness based. Oops. So. So if you go down to a certain point, it's going to start keying out the brights. And if you raise it up, it's keying out the others. And I, I got to clean up the saturation one still, but um, it's just extra noisy for some, some reason. Uh, but here, I'll just focus on the controller. All right. So that leaves us with the feedback controls which work kind of like the rest where you can hold the zoom button and zoom in and out oh yeah i forgot to mention that the y is like a rotate and you can rotate in of these but you can also hold the feedback button and rotate the feedback the b is used to reset things so if i well, that should that reset. Eh, that still resets all of the rotates right now, but whatever. Um, but then you've got left and right, up and down transforms, and uh, A is going to pulse the feedback. Select is going to change the source, and then you've got. Let's see, I think you hold X and you can change the brightness, contrast of it. Um, up and down is going to be the opacity of the feedback. If you hold the feedback button and do these controls, you can rotate the hue and saturation. And then Lastly, there's the composite, and how do I do that? Okay, then you're holding the, this start button, and you can change the top layer, and left and right changes the bottom layer. switch over to touch designer here is the controller so I gotta I'm gonna before I share this I'm gonna finish the instructions but it's basically it has all the different controls for a reference so you actually know what things are doing um, 
hopefully you plug your controller and it looks like that. I mean, you might need some feedback to know what works, what doesn't, but this is what it looked like when I plugged it in. Um, it didn't have the select and start buttons, but I just changed this. I added a couple more and it recognized the rest. I might have, this one's got some extra buttons on the bottom and maybe, maybe get that to work with those two. Um, uh, but yeah, so the left bumper has, this is basically just instead of a one, it just cuts it down to 0.1 for fine tune adjustments. Um, that might not be implemented across this whole thing. Uh, here you've got your left camera transforms all happening. So if you want to fine tune any of this, you can go into these. It's basically broken down into your X, Y movements, your zoom, your rotations, and uh, same thing for the feedback. And then, yeah, then you've got each of your cameras going through these chroma keys. Right now we just got the two, pretty simple. Um, switch between the two of them. Um, but basically this whole thing is just a lot of chops. Um, and I'm sure there's some things I haven't, I could make better and I will, but I'm getting, my attention span is gone as of last night. Um, but yeah, basically, basically, <clears throat> So, you know, mapping these buttons to certain things is not that hard, but the tricky part is getting them to not, if you want to reuse buttons across different things, so different combinations, basically it's a lot of creating what your bypass state is if something else is happening. So, so here we've got camera movement, but if I turn on the feedback, and move that for that layer, then it bypasses it. Or if I'm doing chroma keying, it's not gonna move the original camera around. So you, there just has to be a lot of logic of like, well, is this condition happening? And making it all just specific for these use cases. So I don't know, most people would probably do this in code, but I would never even remember where to look for things. This is just, this is just easier for me almost all of these are going into speed operator that has a minimum maximum set just for my own use cases. But that would be a place where you could make your own adjustments for um, what your limits are in and out. Um, so yeah, then the B button is to reset. So if you want to reset your camera positions, you can hit B plus that, that's camera one, B plus that, there's camera two. If you hit your scale, that's gonna reset all the scales. If you reset your rotation, that's gonna reset all the rotations. If you reset your feedback, that should reset that. What else is still going on? Okay, you have to hold the feedback plus the zoom to get that to reset. Uh, reset your keys and we're back. And I basically designed this for, I like to use live cameras during VJ sets or projections. Um, and this, this way you can kind of have um, outside the frame of like the exact right shot you, rather than having to physically move cameras around to like reframe things, you can just do it all with one controller. And then I just went crazy with the rest of it. Um, but yeah, this was a fun, fun break from making audio reactive, completely self automating systems, something knobs and buttons. I forgot those are fun. So we'll see, see what this is used for. If you use it, you should let me know. If I can re improve on upon it, I will, maybe. I don't know. It's really hard to come back to things. Um, but I tried to make this in a way that 
as uh, as well documented as I ever have. Um, I might clean it up a little bit more before before this is posted, but basically it works. It's doing what I want it to, and we'll call this like 0.9 version. Yeah, how about it? 